All right, my my next Irish notable portrait is subject is Oscar Wilde, playwright, writer, humorist, um, socialite, all around witty guy. So here is a, a nice reference photo that has been colorized uh, of him. There is no shortage of art of him and lots of reference. This is the sketch I made. And so I want to reference my past projects. To see how large I should make my sketch. But my sketch is already focused on the essentials. And you can see it's already kind of looser and um, more based on curves than my other examples. But if I look here at my image size, it's 18 by 24 by 318 pixels per inch. So for my portrait here, I'm going to crop it to be a little narrower, looking at those third lines. Yeah, I'm trying to get one kind of close to the eye. There we go. That's good. Let me box in those eyes like so. All right, now I want this to be around 18 by 22, that's fine. But the resolution, I'm going to push all the way up to 320. Oh, I want to resample. OK, you see how it's going to soften out my pixels, that's fine. Remember, this is just my sketch. And then the other thing I have open in Photoshop is the reference. So what I'm going to do is take a grab of that reference image, copy it, paste it on top of my now resized image. And you see how this time, instead of stretching my image, my sketch to match the photo, I'm actually going to play with the photo a little bit. Let's take the opacity down. And I'm going to warp the photo. So this is a way of caricature. Using warp and pushing and pulling. And it shows me kind of what I can get away with in terms of likeness and what I need to be careful of. And it's this triangle of proportion that really matters the most. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Now let me show you. Okay, so what it shows me is my lips need to be a little bit higher to match that triangle of proportion. He has less space between his upper and his, the bottom of his nose and his lower lip. Otherwise, I think the nose is keeping likeness pretty well. I might move it a little over to the to my right, the image is left. The ear is good, one can, can be raised a little. All right, so now, using that photo as Reference, I'm going to make a copy of my sketch, and I'm going to warp that behind. So I'm going to tuck the ear up, which brings the mouth up a little bit. It's like rolling dough. And now this is neither based solely on my sketch or solely on the photo playing equally with both of them. Okay, that works well. 
Now there's little things I need to tweak, like the mouth needs to move up and the nostrils need to move over. I'm going to take this whole thing. That's why it's nice to have a loose sketch. So you can do this kind of thing. I'm going to warp this. That's why I have the sketch underneath. See, so it fills in my gaps. See, pretty big difference. All right, next, just move the mouth up a little bit. Maybe make it a little less downturned. Now the way artists do this traditionally, especially with portraits, when they're not working digitally, is do it with projection. An opaque projector onto their canvas. But the difference there is, is they can only make their picture match the overhead projection. They can't push and pull both. And so that's something that when you have a, a subject that's pretty well known and you can play with their proportions a fair amount. Cancel that. Then I think it's it's fun to push them multiple ways. And then I'm just going to push this hairline a little bit. Oh, on the wrong layer. Now, because this is digitally colored from a public domain photo, I could actually use this as my coloring and as an underpainting if I so desired. So this is how I would do that. I would set it to multiply mode, right? And I would play with the opacity of the color underneath and let my sketch kind of come through. Already you see it's a little different. In fact, I think I'm going to want to stretch out everything a little bit. So now I'm going to take every layer, select them, and now just scale and stretch it somewhat. make the composition something I'm more interested in. This gives me that sense of caricature. I'm not planning on including his hand. So now let me merge my sketch together with my altered sketch. See that difference there? And then you can see how it works out. Now for this, because it's a more playful subject, I'm going to start it like this. Working with the photo just in the background um, so I can go to it more directly. And the photo is only showing at 40%. It's because I have my sketch at a 60% opacity on top of it. I'm going to lock my sketch and I'm inspired by 
pastel drawings. And so these are some of the, the references I'm taking. I think this is a good way to start. And that's actually from uh, the brushes I was playing with for the last portrait. So what I can do is I can open up some of these. And then I can arrange them in this three up stacked way. and make it so it's easy to steal color. See how there's blues in there? Not a lot of greens, I'll probably add some. But also look at the reference. Same time. Then I want to make this nice and large and find a brush that works for me. Unlock these other layers. And I'm going to call this my base painting layer. Now that I've got this set up, it's a good time to save it. It will save as a Photoshop file with the multiple layers. And that's good. All right. There's other inspiration for Oscar Wilde I have here. But instead of stealing textures or colors from it directly, I especially like this, which is taking a photographic process and then just doing all kinds of crazy oxidation and distressing and adding uh, dyes and paints to it. But it shows his romantic nature. This is why I thought pas pastel might be a good, good way to go about him. Kind of soft eyes and lots of kind of swirls of, of textured color. All right, now I go to my brush. And I'm curious about this pastel palooza brush. Yeah, it's quite nice, especially for a base painting. But I can alter its settings. Give it a little bit of size jitter. The control is supposed to be based on pen pressure. You see how I can do like little dustings, not very opaque. And that's because the dual brush is turned on. If I turn that off, it'll be more direct. The texturing. Yeah, I might as well leave it. Yep. So let's let's make use of this. Okay, so what are some good base colors? Well, this one in particular shows me how pink he can be. And I like that, that pink from this base color. So that's a, a good way to kind of start. Scribble in. And then where he has shadows, I can use a little bit of that bluish. And let's get some yellows in the brightest highlights. And you can't just only have solid color. You need to sometimes have grayed out versions as well. So let's see, just with that, what does that look like? So there you go. So I'm going to go ahead and make a duplicate. That's 100% of the sketch. And put that underneath. So that whenever I want to, I can just turn off the reference and see what I have with my own pixels. But this is a handy method, this is called rotoscoping, of having the photo in the background there because it shows me very clearly the shape of the shadows. Oops, I'm on the wrong layer. So that happens when I do not lock my layer. 